This episode is presented to you by NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. With NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV, you can watch your favorite team's out-of-market Sunday games, plus watch up to four games at once with multi-view. Don't miss the race to the playoffs. NFL Sunday Ticket is now just $39 when bundled with YouTube TV, where you get even more football. Visit YouTube.com slash Spotify offer to sign up now. Lowest price on YouTube TV with base plan. Rest of 2023 season. Terms and embargoes apply. No cancellations. This episode is brought to you by Google Pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the audio magic eraser tool that helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash pixel NBA. Audio magic eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. Hey, Brad, you know how Nationwide is more than an insurance company? Yeah, they're one of America's largest financial services companies. We get that in a song like Business Life Retirement. Or Nationwide's there to protect. I'm kind of the jingle guy. Not sure I agree with that. Well, I'm not sure I like your hat. Well, it would never fit on you. Products issued by Nationwide Life Insurance Company or Nationwide Life and Annuity Insurance Company. The general distributor for variable products is Nationwide Investment Services Corporation, member FINRA, Columbus, Ohio. Distractions happen. So the new fully electric Volvo EX90 comes with a two-sensor driver understanding system designed to help prevent distractions and keep you focused. Reserve yours today. Visit volvocars.com slash US. Back at it again. <laughs> and again. This is David Greenwald. I'm here with Robert Russert, Thad Bell, and Cody Bradley. And the reason you're hearing me do the intro and not Cody days. Bradley is that we recorded about 20 minutes of this podcast. It was not that long. 15 minutes, 10 minutes. We recorded enough of this podcast. It's the best takes ever. We had you're great being takes. Censored, Thad, be quiet. And one take, Cody Bradley <laughs> stops us and says, I have not been recording. So here's attempt number two. It was like five minutes, and you guys were all doing so good. I didn't have the heart to tell you that I wasn't recording. <laughs> so I let everyone practice. We got the first take out of the way. And look, now we're all happy. We started this podcast on a more positive note. We were Reverse all bummed psychology. out. psychology, <laughs> yes. So yes, here we are. Uh, let's start off again with some positive things that have happened. We're all feeling good, but I know everyone listening right now is still in the dumps about the 2 to nothing loss against Colorado. So, give me some funny things, some good things, some positive things from this weekend. Are you going to start this time again? Okay, I will start. Well, I didn't start last time, but I will start this time. Uh, 100% without a doubt, it is the glorious unveiling of the NYCFC MLS Cup banner. <laughs> wow, yeah. And the guy cheering, he was emphatic about how great it was. It's like, oh. And, I mean, what is, what's going on there? Was it that they the Yankees aren't allowing them to have a bigger one? Is that that's what's going on here? They don't they don't have funds for more than that. I don't I don't get it. Where would you put it that wouldn't block a fan though? I mean I mean <laughs> they don't have like you know that much room. I'm it, sure it could have been longer, maybe not maybe not taller, but it could have set on that railing longer at least. We had a bigger banner than yeah. that at Podcast Row. Yeah, I mean we, <laughs> our our shades of blue poster was that size. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. Well, when David goes to Yankee Stadium, let us know if it's still there, actually. I'll be impressed Some if it Yankees is. They probably it. take it down after t- this week. I'm sure they took it down <laughs> yeah. immediately. If it was, yeah. They can't leave it up. A Yankees fan would cut that thing down and use uh-huh. it to beat somebody or roll up a body and dump it in the river. <laughs> well, the Bronx is rough. Yeah, that's fair. My, my favorite thing of the weekend is a combination <clears throat> of uh, we're going to combine Cauldron Facebook post of the week uh, and this is courtesy of our friend Phil on Cauldron Facebook. Shouts to Phil. That was a completely uninspired 90 by the boys tonight. Also, Mr. Crazy Harry Armed Ref might be the worst in MLS. Yes. And that's saying something. Uh, the referee, my God. This, <laughs> some, somebody needs to help this man. I don't know what product is necessary. I don't know. I thought it was tattoos. I, it was <laughs> exactly. jarring. And it was notice, my wife, who was largely disinterested uh, in the game, looked up and noticed how hairy this man was. 
It's distracting. They need to make a rule. Referees need to be clean shaven. It's distract from the game. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like it's probably pretty cold. Everybody was in coats. Maybe it's like a <laughs> like a heat retention thing. But like, I worry about this man when he's like refing in Miami in July. Like I'm very worried <laughs> about his ability to keep cool and not pass out in the middle of the field. Sure, it wasn't like leg warmers he's using on his arm or something? It, at first That's glance, it, it honestly looked like it. It looked like Austin <laughs> Powers, like when he would take a shirt and they glued like a rug to his chest. It was incredible. <laughs> Maybe Carlos Heel could have used that uh, in New England during the, his snow match that he was so happy about. Yeah, stop the fucking game! Quote, then, unquote. Yes, and then Bruce <laughs> Arena has to follow that up in his press conference. Like, oh, that's what Carlos said. Okay, going on. Is that your best Carlos imitation? <laughs> I didn't hear an accent there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stop the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> and my funny moment from the weekend was not MLS related, but Montpellier, or however you say that, versus Nice. Penalty called. The dude guy steps up, does the, how do you say the word, Cody? Panenka. Panenka. I can never get that right. And chips it up. The goalie starts to dive to one side, just stands back up, casually catches it. Yes. <laughs> and the game ends 0-0, so that was such a wasted PK. I love when that happens. I miss that. I'll have to go back and find it. I love a good failed Panenka. All right. I guess now we can finally discuss the 2 to nothing loss in Commerce City. I in, thought we already did. In front of, <laughs> in front of 2,000 <laughs> fans or so, half of which were sporting fans. Uh, someone, someone get us started here. Robert, what do you have from this game? Well, I'll tell you what, um, you know, the goals that we gave up, we were talking about, um, how, who's to blame. I mean, you've got Zuzi not uh, stepping up and Cody, I liked your observation. He's got his arm raised and he's looking directly across at the guy that he's keeping on side. Uh, but in Denby, I think kind of turned off more focused on keeping that line and just didn't deal with the guy right by him. Uh, and it was, of course, Dave, Diego Rubio and David, that's your fault. All David's fault. Every week, David <laughs> picks a player to, to talk shit on, and that player then shits on Sporting Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, in, in my defense, I also shit on Jonathan Lewis and Michael Barrios. And Michael Barrios is very sure. bad. Um, but I've got a new tactic this week. Uh, okay. I will be shitting on all of our players <laughs> in hopes that it Good. inspires them to go out and just throttle Chicago. Yeah, that first goal... Did not look good. I'm leaning more towards Zusi as the problem there than in Denbe. And yeah, like like you said, he it was a group effort. It was it was definitely a group effort. <laughs> but it's one of those where it's just everything was so bad about it that Zusi, the guy that was holding him on, was looking at the guy in front of him, not on sides, not off sides, and still raises his hand out of desperation. Just it's one of those one of those plays. Everything looked bad about it. But it was it was a very good. It's still all of the defensive miscues there and keeping that line. It still took a very good pass to get it through there. Hey, did Zuzi learn that from Ilié? I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> that was mean. That was mean. But yes, it was a very <laughs> nice pass from what Estevez to Rubio. It, it, it couple inches one way, a couple inches the other way. It either hits Fontas or it goes behind Rubio. It doesn't go through. It drops basically right to where Rubio needs it, a touch, and, and it was a tweener it at at the at the height that they yeah, can't deal with. And that's we've talked about that before. That Benny taught that or. I taught that to Benny, who Benny then made the pass to Di, uh, Dom mm -hmm. back in the old days. And uh, but that was a perfect pass from them. So even with all of that, and I do have to wonder if Logan and, all, uh, you know, him not making the run with him, you know, it's just not knowing the tendencies of the rest of the back line yet. I, don't, I mean, do they have better communication at some point? Or is that just a, yeah, shit play, doesn't matter what? Well, I'm, on, I'm all about Logan and Denbe. He's like I, he's I think one of our best players at the moment right now. So and you, but with that being said, are you still in love with his calves? <laughs> yes, yes, nice <laughs> calves. Looks good. Looks good on the field. It has the look about him as a as an outside back. But um, yeah, we can't forget that it is. This was his third game with the team. So and then you also got to at least know that with a lot of guys in their playing yesterday that haven't had much practice time or aren't first team guys, that does throw off a little bit of stuff too. So. What, three days isn't enough training time with the team? Oh, come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> dropping down from the Serbian league. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, who else do we need to talk about? I, I want to get to the offense eventually, but a point I want to make about the defense is that I think it's not an overall larger problem. I still like Izzy. I still like Fontas. 
I think that they've just had some moments where they just forget what they're doing, uh, some lapses in judgment, and they've been punished on each of those. And David, then, was there something you were talking about messing around in the back? I don't know, was there? Oh, you're talking about the first time when we were not recording? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it started bad. Zussi intercepts a ball in the second minute and then dribbles across the six-yard box while under pressure, which is always a recipe for success. Uh, and then just throughout the game, Izzy, Zussi, Fontes, even in Dinbe, sorry, Cody, we're all, for lack of a better phrase, dicking around and <laughs> just passing it back and forth and slowly retreating back into a corner before they had to either try to hoof it up field directly to a Colorado player or kick it out of bounds. And this has been a problem I've had with the team for years, which is that at a certain point you're trying to play th- out of the back and you're playing yourself into a problem rather than just realizing that the pass isn't open, the runs aren't being made, just hoof it up the field and regroup. Now, one thing I, I, I was watching yesterday and, you know, Zuzi makes a pass to somebody on the other team. Fontes makes a pass to somebody on the other team. But one guy I don't really remember seeing do that was Izzy. And I felt that he was one of the better guys at just when the ball was in danger, playing it out instead of trying to dick around with it, as you would say. So I, I felt he was actually one of the guys who didn't do that. Now, maybe I missed the ch- maybe I missed something that he was did wrong, but I felt that he was really like when that ball went in, he played it out to the sideline instead of straight out. He'd play it up farther. I mean, he, I thought he did intelligently with that, better than – we do normally for some reason. That's Izzy you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he did that as well. And he was frustrated that whole game. That yellow card he got, he was getting talking to some referees the whole time. I think someone on the other team must have been chirping at him and talking about his mama. Yeah, I do wonder what got him all ticked off that time when he got the yellow. but Because we couldn't see it. The broadcast didn't show it. Yeah. And neither did the, behind the, the other broadcast either. Extra Speaking of things that were alert. funny this weekend, the broadcast. Oh, wait. <laughs> Um, all right, what else? The de- Who else do we need to talk about on the defense? Anyone else have any takes for the back line? Besides the does, entire does defense everyone, the second goal. Does yeah. everyone concur with me that there's – is there an overall larger problem? Is our defense bad, or are there moments that they need to tighten up? They're all moments. You know, it, it's been a trend in each of the games where in Atlanta it was just a couple bad passes, right? It was uh, Yuri – it was, you know, just a couple sprayed balls out of the back against Houston. It was Timmy passing it directly to Darwin Quintero. It's not that the overall defense has been terrible. It's that we just have, we switch off for a few moments at a time, and each time we're getting burned by it. Which is a very not Peter Vermees team characteristic, said very poorly by me. But that's <laughs> that's not something that you would think of from a Peter Vermees team who requires his players to just be on at all times. And Yeah, I, will, I don't, won't necessarily agree with you. You would think that, that would be the case, and for a few years that was the case. Like, they were always locked locked in every play, every roll of the ball, as he used to say. But it seems like over the, the Matt last Beesler, year, Aurelian, Colin, Chance Myers years, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they, there were still mistakes made, but it wasn't because of inattention. It was, you know, like a errant pass or a little bit errant you know they were trying to do the right thing or somebody beat them out running them or something like that but it wasn't usually because they just missed something they weren't ready for that moment uh, they were usually trying to do the right thing and it just seems like over the last few years there's has been a lot more of it that which has led to players not playing or not being here anymore I mean, there could be an effect from a fact okay our attack is really not having it together other teams are putting 11, 10 people, sorry, not 11, 10 people behind the ball. <laughs> and maybe our defense feels a little under pressure. Hey, if we screw up once, that's going to be the game. And maybe they're suffering because of that. I don't know. Just a thought. Man, Colorado really did park that bus like crazy. They did it like they were, uh, you know, like in the Champions League. They're a team from Nicaragua away at a MLS team. Like there was literally 10 people behind that ball. Like to close out the half, the last like four or five minutes of that halftime of the first half, they had every single person way behind that midway line. Well, Cody, that's how you play if you want to attract fans to your home games. That's, I mean, that's what they do. <laughs> that's what I was complaining <laughs> at, at, the, at the house I was watching it at. I'm like, they're doing this in front of all these 2,000 fans. Right. <laughs> that's why they don't That's why they don't care. That's why no one's there. <laughs> you know, that, that's always like an argument with people like, oh, you you play to win or, you know, if you, if you win, pl- people will be out there. Well, obviously, that's not necessarily true. I mean, yeah. if you don't have entertainment in – that game, people won't keep showing up. <laughs> and it and it works. I think that's another reason. The 
teams are finding out, well, it works against Sporting KC. So chicken and the egg kind of question. They Colorado was parking the bus a lot that last five or ten minutes of the first half, but Sporting also had a lot of possession in that time, Was which one generated the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was a point where there was like 20 passes all on the left-hand side. Uh, all the new guys and were basically playing pass to each other. Uh, Colorado was all parked, and they finally were able to swing it around to the other side. And I know we'll get a little bit more into the offense as we go, but uh, which one generated that? Was it that Sporting finally had the possession and Colorado just dropped back and said, yeah, we're not going to even play? I just I just assumed it was the – a tactic from the Colorado bench was like, we're going into this hat, going into the break with a one goal lead. So everyone get back. <laughs> Could be. Well, I think it's other teams knowing that Kansas city, Hey, they're really good at swinging the ball out wide, rotating it back around to the other side, swing it around. I mean, look how thick, uh, if you look at the passing breakdown, how thick the lines are between the center backs and the wide backs and, and the wingers. And there's nothing in the middle. Uh, I think it's part of that. Hey, sporting, that's what they do. They're not good at penetrating. And exacerbated by the fact that there's a new center forward coming in. Mm-hmm. There's a winger that's new. You know, they're not going to be coordinated and working together and know each other's tendencies yet. So I think it's both. It seems like if, yeah, if you're Colorado preparing for this game, it was an easy game plan to come up with. There. They didn't know about Shallowy until late, but still, yeah. Well, even even with the way the team was playing with Shallowy. Exactly. Yeah, Shallow, it yeah. doesn't really change much because that's he needs, he needs openings to move in. So. Sure. This podcast is brought to you by AT&T Fiber with AllFi. Something tells me that the guy watching sports for 13 hours straight on Sunday, who then stays up watching the recaps of those 13 hours, then calls his friends to talk about it, is definitely going to notice that half a second delay. Get AT&T Fiber with AllFi and watch sports any time of day from anywhere in your house. Live like a gagillionaire. Limited availability in select areas. Go to att.com slash hypergig to check eligibility. Coverage may require extenders at additional charge. Uh, Felipe Hernandez went out. Do we do we get an update on him? It appeared the broadcast was indicating it was a bit of a knock, and I'm I'm hoping so. His shoulder, yeah. Robert yeah. is indicating on a audio medium for me. Here. <laughs> yeah, just trying to help you out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no no update this morning. I guess we're recording very early today. No no word no, on that post game on Felipe. Yeah, I don't think they would. Act, they don't usually say something the next morning unless it's uh, he can get catch him at practice or something, but. Cam Duke came in for him and had at least one very good run up the field, like a burst of like 50 yards and got a got a shot off, a little too eager on the shot, but he, he looked pretty good, I thought. Yeah, I mean, what he does is good. He, he attacks the defense, he drives at them, he, he's quick. But in this type of game, that's part of the ingredient, but still, we need combination up front, and that just wasn't happening either. So it's kind of sad that we look at Cam Duke and say, what a great game he had when all he was doing was just running into the defense, <laughs> basically. Well, you mentioned we need combination up front, and we can just kind of segue into talking about the offense here. Uh, the At halftime, the Sporting KC broadcast, they were even talking about the combination of of Jonice and Voinovich. Voinovich. There we go. We're not, we're not finding you. <laughs> we're not going to find you for this one. Voinovich. I was. I, I pronounced the O too much on that one. Voinovich. Uh, and they did have. They have a, a couple good, a couple good moments. A couple good back and forths there. And Jonis is very. I like the. He has a very good first touch. He wants to. Go, he's a very positive player. Wants to go forward. And I think I saw the conversation in our Slack group that yes, a, a pass first mentality or just throwing that in his putting that in his mind every now and then that hey a pass could help too uh but yeah I think I think that those two had we saw enough that there is some creativity there that could blossom between those two new players that we have up front yeah I agree I mean I I think Janice did make a couple of nice passes uh he does have that dribble first mentality at this point but he also has it's really exciting had- you know, doesn't know the tendencies of the other guys. When he's a couple passes he made was to places where he thought guys would be, or and they weren't, or he thought they'd make the run and they didn't. Uh, so I, I think he did all right. I mean, it's it's easy to be down on the offense right now because they've only scored two goals in three games and nothing yesterday. But I do see some signs that they could be creative. They could be a team that would be able to break down a bunker. I just, they don't have it right now. They don't know each other well enough to do it. 
Yeah, I think that's a tendency that comes out of that. Hey, I know I can dribble between these guys and make something happen. I can't combine with my teammates too well yet because I don't know them well. So I think you go to that. Yeah. You know, you, know, you go to what you know. You, you go to what worked in the previous league for yeah. your previous team, for what you think that brought you here. And then another thing, like, um, the, I know they mentioned on the broadcast, and, and Vermees has mentioned this, is the last thing to come is the final product, the final pass, the this or that. And there's some truth to that. However, you can look around the league and what Austin scored like 10 goals in two games. Somebody is able to put together. If you go back two years ago, we Sporting scored what eight goals in the first two games with new players. Now this is a little extreme. They don't know each other very well, but it's not just because it's new. Agreed. Voinovich got his first start about three days, four days after arriving with the team. Yeah, we've we've had as many practices for this podcast as he did <laughs> for Sporting. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Well done on that. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think of him, if anything? I have, like, really no thoughts. I can think of one play where he got the ball and turned and shot, and I can't really remember much more it was from, a little wide. from him being involved. It was well, a little at, wide, yeah. <laughs> actually, it wasn't that far wide. I mean, when, usually I, like, sarcastically say it was yeah. a little wide. That's Roger putting it in the beer corner. Right. No, right. Th- it was it was a good enough, like, a quick enough turn that I'm like, all right, he can play soccer. Yeah, it was, it was, it was just a couple feet wide. He was closer to Polito than Roger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. There we go. That's a good. Well, so my my observation about him is kind of our conversation of goes kind of into our conversation about the offense as a whole, which is I'm not worried about the quality of the guys on our front line. Jean-Nice, Daniel, Nicola, Johnny fucking Russell are all, I think, good players. Um, what my concern is is we got overrun in the midfield. And we don't have any creation and any creative spark in the midfield. And looking at a passing map, <laughs> Nikola didn't get any service from the midfield. He didn't get a single ball from Remy. He didn't get a single ball from Roger. Roger barely had any passes to Johnny. Roger barely had, I mean, he had some to jean But there was just an absolute lack of combination from the midfield linking up with our, with our forwards. And so I think you're asking a, a hell of a lot of, some wingers and a new center forward to be the entire creative impetus. And and the only way for them to get the ball is a long ball over the top. And so, you know, if Remy and Roger and especially Roger, who's a veteran aren't going to be able to combine with our forwards, we're not going to score. Yeah. Of all the players that we were missing, uh, the one that I felt that would have made a difference in that game was Gotti Kinda. So exactly like what you're saying, that's that creativity there and that, Attacking mid is is definitely something that's missing. Yeah, it's an almost exact point I was going to make, too, uh, as far as what you said, David. Um, but, yeah, Gotti Kinda definitely would make a difference in there. But, I mean, somebody's going to step up. I mean, the teams are going to keep doing this to us, and we're going to have to deal with it. So things have to change. Well, I think Remy showed that he was maybe going to try to do that in this that, that last game in this period where we do have some people out in the midfield. I think he showed flashes of maybe he could do that or maybe he was willing to do that. Uh, I don't think he did in this one, obviously, but and that's and again, this, this is a game where Yuri isn't there, so Remy's playing the six. Uh, Felipe is actually more creative than Roger, and then he goes out early. So now you have Cam coming in, who is creative and right. drives towards the the atta- into the attack. Probably can also pass a little bit more often. You don't have the, but when when we do have Kenda in there. That's so, so his tendency is to just drive into the box and then make yeah. the late pass, not the early pass. So he's not exactly that string-pulling 10 that, you know, a Benny No, would we be. have no one on the team like that, but right. I think he'd be better at it than others. I'm, I'm not arguing that. Yeah. I'm just saying he's also not that guy that right. people will think of that way. So we, Sporting has to understand that that's not going to be the guy they have. They just don't have that guy in their system right at this moment. So... They're going to have to figure out how to run a guy in, drop a ball back maybe, you know, guys overlap or fill back in positions. And you could see a little bit of that yesterday with Janice and Nicola and Logan on that left side. I don't, I forget who in the midfield was over there at that moment. But there was that mo- that was, there was some of that motion where they were getting those passes and pulling guys out. They just weren't able to get that, that good shot off at that point. All right, so let me throw this out here. How much did we miss Shallowy? Because Shallowy is a combiner. I think in that case we did. Yeah. 
he's not going to be the guy who penetrates a lot. I mean, he needs the, a little bit of space to make that first. He doesn't need a lot of space to shoot. He needs that first touch space. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I mean, certainly there's a drop-off in quality between Janice and Shallowy. Maybe not long-term, but, right. but as of today. Um, but I, I think our problems are, are system-created. And they're created by Vermees. And, the you know, the dueling eights can be really good. It's nice to have two guys with some bite in the midfield who can, you know, play the true eight and are going to defend more than, like, your traditional Argentinian ten. But ever since we lost Benny, we have not had a creative midfielder who can break lines with passes, who can hit that inch-perfect ball, you know. Lucio would like a word. Hmm? Busio would like a word. <laughs> Felipe Gutierrez may as well. Goody would like a word. <laughs> as as but great yes. as they were, neither <laughs> were as good as Benny. Busio was approaching that. I don't think Felipe Gutierrez was ever that. Uh, he was better at it. Than, with, yeah, a l- he was. He was better at it than a lot of those other guys. I'm yes. not arguing that. Yes. But he's a slightly he, different player too. He's uh, he's also a, a combo eight ten guy, yeah. not a straight ten guy. Sure. So. But yeah, Felipe. I mean, Felipe is the perfect midfielder for the system that Vermees wants to play. Mm-hmm. We don't have a guy that good right now, and with the way that we're set up, and especially with injuries, especially without Polito, we need a creative midfielder. We need yep. somebody who can who can make something out of nothing. And other teams around the league have have those guys. What's Columbus, Johan Crozet doing now? <laughs> bitching at Vermees for literally Hungary nothing. On Instagram. <laughs> Instead I guess of working I was, on his game. I know that that was a setup. I know that Gotti isn't like has played differently than that guy in the past, but I think in the current situation, like because that's what this team needs, I think he could fill that role if given the you know given that job. And and, and f- again, in fairness, kind of going against the, as something I already said myself, but Vermees challenged him last year to be more of a creator, and he was yeah. being more of a creator. So maybe this year when he comes back. He will be that. I don't know. I mean, it, I, I'm just saying he hasn't been that guy totally. So, re, like you know, we he, he's not the Benny guy that we all want somebody to be the current superstar Benny guy. Is Janice and Johnny an alliteration? I can't decide. What's the definition of an alliteration? J Does it have to be the sound. letters? No. So it's just J the sound in both of them. So you're good. But it's not quite a. It's a J versus a J. Such a big difference. <laughs> My Missouri English, it don't matter that I much. take my alliteration seriously. It's English, American I'm, English. We're known for taking merch. liberties. I was going to say, David, have you started I'm, working on the merch? I'm, I'm the... working on some merch for us. <laughs> Here's Johnny's. Hey, guys, we play Chicago this weekend. They have scored a grand total of two goals. They have, con- <laughs> they have conceded zero goals. Yeah, I know. That's the problem. They've also <laughs> lost less times than we have. <laughs> yeah, they haven't lost yet. They're 1-0-2. All right, well, Robert, with the seamless transition there, we're we moving on to <laughs> the Chicago game. Is that what we're doing here? Well, <laughs> final final summation of the Colorado game. There we it go. It sucked. It was boring. It was our third boring game in a row. And it hopefully at some point will be fun to watch again. Let's I move on think, and never think I, about it again. I don't think it'll be against Chicago. <laughs> I think this team will be fun to watch. Yes. Guys like Janice. Janice is fun to watch. You know, uh, I do think that there are some guys on this team which will be fun to watch. And there's there's player, young players that are still growing up, and I'm not in the panic mode by any means. I know some people are ready to dumpster fire this team and the offense and the defense and everything else involved. I'm far from that. Yeah, it wasn't a perfect game, not by any means. But going on the road and losing to Colorado, who finished on the top of the West last year, isn't, isn't the worst thing in the world. The, the two losses have been to good teams. And Denbe's calves are keeping me in it. Also, big shouts to Caden Pierre. Who yeah. I think that was his MLS debut. Because he played in the the tournament that we didn't want to play in last year. League's Cup. The League's Cup, yep. thank you. It's the one that doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think he played in that. I thought that was the first. He subbed on for Jalen. He got injured. In, okay. Jalen yeah. got injured and he subbed yeah, on. Yeah, 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 right. Mm. Um, but and he played right wing. Yeah, he subbed on for Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's a he's another one of those guys we have uh, a lot of hope for. Also, interesting that Peter made a lot of subs, but without a lot of guys for offense last night. 
Yeah. Ben Sweat came on for Logan. Uh, Courtney Ford for Andreu. Uh, we'll see who else. What do we think of Courtney Ford? Of course, my Jake comment Davis when they all came Roger. in was, oh, Vermees has given up. <laughs> yeah, and Jake Davis for Roger. And, and, and Hashtag again, play the kids. Jake, as people have talked about Felipe Hernandez being much like Roger, I think Jake Davis is more like Roger because Jake kind of takes pleasure in hammering people. At least I kind of get that did. feeling. He was out there snatching ankles. It was yeah, like, yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I didn't know that about Jake Davis until that yeah. media day training, <laughs> and I saw those, those two players going at each other, yeah. Roger and Jake Davis. Yeah, they Jake is more like Roger than than Felipe Hernandez. Felipe Hernandez, I think, plays like Roger because he's had to, because that's the role he needs to do to to get on the field. He's a little bit more creative than Rod. He's Felipe Hernandez is a step more creative than Roger. I don't want to criticize Roger too hard because he's he needs to be up on that wall as soon as he retires. Also, yeah, keep an eye on Jake Davis. He's spicy. I like it. Yeah, now, I, think, I, don't, I don't know if he like starts a lot, but all he, the subs acquitted himself pretty well though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's just take a couple minutes here to briefly, we'll try another podcast later in the week, but let's briefly look at the Chicago game. Two goals scored, two goals scored, right? Yes. And zero conceded. So another, <laughs> I guess we can expect another bunker and play. Yeah, I guess, I guess what we can Maybe do is so. park the bus <laughs> game for 90 minutes. Uh, yeah. Who's going to be, is anyone going to be back? Is Kyrie going to be back? Do we have any information on no. any of this? No. Are we going to provide zero information to our, our listeners? We have no information. It's not that we're not providing <laughs> well, information. Well, he was listed we as questionable, right? So there we go. There we go. Odds are he probably could. Yeah. Return. See, make it there. You go. Do what Robert does. Make it sound like we have something. <laughs> now, did you see that Johnny had a little hamstring issue yes. when he went out? That's I didn't now, see that. Yes, when yeah. he subbed out, that's that's more of an issue right now. I mean, because now if Johnny goes down, <laughs> Jesus. No, no. Like, Graham Zeus here, right wing. Zeus on the wing. You know, maybe it's our discussion in the Slack group that you guys were having about this. Maybe it's your guys' fault. You and Kuhn and everybody talking about that before this game. Now we're in this situation. Thanks. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I have the power to be a jinx. <laughs> well, the conversation he's referring to was the – we were looking at the potential of all the international call-ups. Yeah. And, <laughs> and how badly sporting could get hit while already being hit with injuries. And just the, the number of players would be available yeah. for Vermees if all of this would happen is quite shocking. Can't lose players to the international window if they're all hurt. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe it's a roost. Yeah. Let's, let's not go down that road again. <laughs> All right, final thoughts here? Actually, before we go, I'm going to... That's what a final thought is. I'm going to venture out of sporting range. Yes. Go to the Kansas City Comets. Leo Gibson scored his 281st goal for for a Kansas City team, for Kansas City Comets, and that breaks the record for indoor soccer in Kansas City, beating Wild West Wade. He got two goals the other night. There's Uh, a name I haven't heard in many years. And the the Comets did a... uh, it was the attack. They were doing an attack night to honor former attack players. Ah, they were wearing throwback. attack jerseys. And it was just fitting that with a bunch of attack player, former attack players in, in the house wearing attack jerseys, Leo Gibson passes attack player Wild West Wade to be the all-time leading goal scorer indoor Kansas City history. That is very cool. And Leo is such a, a nice super guy and player coach and always putting the team first. He's played some years where he was the – uh, playing defense, even though he was their best goal scorer because he had to. But another cool thing was all of his former Kansas City coaches were in the house. Blacko and Onoski, current current US Was Women's Wild Hatchet West team. Wade there? No. Was not in attendance. Where is he I at have, in the world I have a right question. Now? Is, it, is that his government name? Like, did his parents <laughs> name him Wild? <laughs> it better be. And, and are you saying Wes, like as in Wesley or Weston? Or is, are you saying Wild Wesley. West as in like W-E-S. Will Smith? W E S. Okay. He had glorious long red hair. Yes. I was really hoping that you this guy's name was Wild West Wade, <laughs> and that his parents were just real enthusiasts for like. You can't just say West Wade at this. Big point. Bonanza fans. Yeah. I I have I want to tell the story. I have a West Wade story. I used to play for the uh, my youth soccer team was owned by the guy that owned where the Comets trained. So I was, I was always, I was like kind of behind the scenes with them a lot. And I would always see, we, our locker room was the comments like locker room. And this guy with the long, beautiful flowing red hair, there was just like a normal men's lockers that you would see in this locker room. And then his, he just had like mountains of shampoo and all of these products and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. And then there was one game I was 
you know, they, they run a lap after they, after they win. And all the fans are, like, beating on the glass. And me, sh- bright-eyed, redhead with the bowl cut as a little kid, Wes Wade runs by and just stops, like, sees a redhead. And we just, like, lock eyes and have this moment that I've <laughs> never forgot. My parents have never forgot this moment. And then he just, like, kept going. He didn't say anything. He just, like, stopped and looked at me. And then just kept going. Did you say, <laughs> I love your triple alliteration name? Yes. <laughs> yes. That is why. I think that's why. Forget the red hair. That's why right. I like it. It's the alliteration. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I thought it was just the ginger connection there. <laughs> I want to, like, break into, like, Kermit voice and saying it's a ginger connection or something. <laughs> Please, no. Well, now you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants me to do that. Okay. Well, then you can leave us with something prophetic then. How about that? Ah, I got him this time. I've got one. Okay, there we go. You I've missed got your chance. Too. You missed your chance, Thad. Maybe not for maybe not prophetic. Just a fun fact. Okay. And a, and a preview for our Chicago game. Chicago striker is Casper Shabilko, and Shabilko is spelled with a P. And now he's going to score on us. <laughs> Just been sent off. Some part of strong and all come soft. Fight, 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 has got me drinking. Fight, 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 has got me drinking. Fight, 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 has got me drinking. Give me beer, whiskey, winter gin. Anything to shake this, but I'm 